I rise today in this house asking the same questions that so many of my fellow Canadians are asking. How did we end up here? Across the world, our allies are in shock. I've had friends call me from all over the world asking me what is going on in your country. They know that we Canadians are a quiet and polite people. Something must be very wrong for a peace-loving people to rise up, take to the streets, fighting for freedom from a government mandates and restrictions. We are here because the Liberal government slowly encroached upon the freedoms of Canadians and because the Prime Minister chose to use hate and fear and division as a part of his COVID strategy. The Liberals want to create a false narrative. They want to convince you that the protesters are terrorists. They need you to believe this so that you can, they can justify the heavy-handed approach that they have taken by invoking the Emergency Measures Act. Hard-working Canadians are seeking empathy and understanding, listening from the elected officials who, for whom they pay their salaries. And yet, this Prime Minister clearly refuses to listen to any opinion that is not exactly like his. He has said that those who disagree with him have wrong opinions. That is not leadership. And this failed leadership is responsible for the situation with which we are now faced. This protest could have been over at least a week ago without the police intervention that we see now if the Liberals had accepted our motion for them to provide a timetable outlining when Canadians could have their lives back. Even prominent uh, leaders around the world are condemning this Prime Minister's authoritarian move from British MPs to U.S. Senators to Brazilian lawmakers to international authors and journalists. The free world is looking at Canada in shock and using words such as authoritarian and totalitarian dictatorship to describe our government. Let me remind this House that it was less than two years ago when the Prime Minister celebrated our truckers as heroes and mobilized a social media campaign thanking them, thanking a trucker. Ms. Ms. Madam Speaker, I repeat it again, this isn't about who's right or who's wrong. It is about who gets to be a part of this conversation. And the only acceptable answer to that question is everybody, every Canadian. The Emergencies Act is a declaration of a state of national emergency. It is a blunt force tool that should only be used when there is a national crisis at hand, when all the legislative and legal powers have been exhausted. Canadians know very well that this Prime Minister did not exhaust all of the options before he implemented this Act. And our criminal laws have provisions that will allow for seizure of crime proceeds, the towing of vehicles, freezing of bank accounts, and these measures should have been used first. Conservatives do believe in the rule of law. We believe in peaceful protests and do not support protests that interfere with critical infrastructure. So when the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor the, the Coots border in Alberta, the Emerson border in, in Manitoba were blocked. Protesters were asked to leave, and the authorities attended, asked them to leave, and they did. The RCMP dealt with those issues efficiently without a declaration of national emergency. All critical infrastructures were cleared, and what was left was a protest in front of Parliament and downtown Ottawa. 
To halt further protest, the Prime Minister threatened to take away driver's license, seize trucks, freeze bank accounts, and outright intimidate lawful protesters. These are the actions of a dictator, and this is exactly what happens in totalitarian regimes. I have received thousands of emails from people all over the country terrified. One lady who bought just a simple t-shirt and is afraid that her bank account is going to be frozen. Madam Speaker, invoking the Emergencies Act, where conditions have not been met, undermines the confidence in our democracy. This is not the first large protest in this country. We have resolved many other protests without Im invoking the Emergencies Act, such as OCA, pipeline protests, and in my riding of Haldeman Norfolk, Caledonia protests. The Canadian legal system has sufficient laws to deal with protests. Our FinTrack system allows for the tracing of funds and the freezing of accounts. Continuation of the Emergencies Act without clear evidence of a national emergency is a threat to our democracy. I remind this House that when the War Measures Act was first enacted, our, the predecessor, predecessor to this Act, many innocent people's lives were implicated and lives were destroyed as a result. Even Defence Minister Perrin Beatty, in introducing the Act, expressed the generally held view that the War Measures Act was an extremely effective tool for a, 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 as a political device. But as a criminal device, it was extremely ineffective. Madam Speaker, I'm a trained lawyer, and I've practiced law for over 20 years. I've taught law at law school, and as such, I believe in the rule of law, and its application is very important to me. I am now a legislator, so it is also imperative that I'm convinced that the laws are properly applied. If we examine the appropriate section of the Emergencies Act, we will see that the reasons for invoking this Act are lacking. The Liberals cite three reasons. One, we are told that it is necessary to deal with continuing blockades. This is factually incorrect, since all blockades at the border crossings were removed peacefully with existing laws in place. There is nothing in the Emergencies Act that gives law enforcement powers that they didn't have when they removed the blockades at the Ambassador Bridge, at Coots, and at Manitoba border. As all bridges have been cleared and the protest was relegated to downtown Ottawa, primarily on Wellington Street in front of Parliament, that certainly does not constitute a national emergency. Two. They use the Act to prevent adverse effect on protests on the Canadian economy. Well, again, this is factually incorrect. Canada was ex experiencing economic insecurity as a result of the adverse effects of the lockdowns and the mandates, and this occurred long before the protests and the blockades. The third reason was to reduce the impact of blockades on Canada's relationship with the trading partners. It is unbelievable and incredulous that this Prime Minister needs to invoke the Emergencies Act to secure our relationship with our trading partners. And frankly, the United States is our biggest trading partner, and many U.S. governors and countries around the world have condemned this Prime Minister's heavy-handed approach. It is very likely that his actions alone will negatively impact on our relationship with our trading partners. It is clear that the Prime Minister, in using the Emergencies Act as a political tool to terrorize and punish dissenters by ruining their lives of people who disagree with him. The preponderance of the evidence clearly does not support invoking the Emergencies Act. Canada, Canadians are desperate for hope and are calling for unity. People on all sides of the debate need compassion and understanding. Like it or not, the Prime Minister needs to take responsibility for his failed leadership. 
Guarding our freedoms and upholding our democracy means that we need to have compassionate hearts and listening ears. The Prime Minister's actions likely will bring this government and our democracy into disrepute. Thankfully, there is a simple solution to this problem. Let's entertain a nonpartisan resolution to end mandates, just like many countries around the world, including Ireland, Sweden, Norway, Tanzania, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic. And together, we can begin to restore we have, um, We have come to the end uh, of the time allowed. Questions and comments, the